Everything right now you're seeing a shot on my iPhone 16 Pro in ProRes Log 4K. Today we're going to go through the most basic way to color grade your iPhone footage, in particular the ProRes Log footage in my recent Italy trip. If you haven't seen it, please go check it out. I'll be sharing my thoughts on Instagram, but you feel free to check it out. I do most of my daily updates on there. This is my very simple nose structure on color grading most of my iPhone footage. This tutorial will be a two-step process. One is to get the color back from Log to Rec 709, and then the second step is my film so-called look. Uh, I'm no by means anything professional, but it's just the way I've been kind of doing my color grade, and hopefully it's easy enough for beginners to follow as well. By the way, I do have the new M4 coming in as well, so I will be doing a live test of DaVinci Resolve as well as Final Cuts, running through different codecs and testing out different effects to see everyday uses, how much does it impact or how much does it need to be improved, because right now I'm using the M1, so that's coming very soon if you're interested. But let's get into DaVinci Resolve. Just want to show you on the top right here, the metadata. ProRes 422 HQ 60 FPS at 4K. Ignore all these nodes, I have a lot on here and you might be thinking, okay, this is overwhelming. We're gonna make this a lot more simpler. So let's remove all of this. So first up, let's create three nodes. You can right click, you can add node, or you can just command S to create a shortcut. Okay, so the first node is usually denoise, but we won't be using this for now. So let's just turn that off. And then we have balance, which is our exposure. The second one is our highlights, which we won't be using at the start as well. So let's turn that off as well. And then finally, we have the CSD, which is our color space transform. Finally, we have our secondary look. So basically, there's only three nodes right now. We have the balance, the CSD, and the film node. Now, by the way, let's show you my color space. Uh, right now, my color management is on DaVinci YGB and my scenes on Rec 709. Uh, if you're on Windows, that's 709. Actually, I should be on 709A because I'm on a Mac. A little tip uh, on how I actually color grade this or my process of editing is usually I have this on DaVinci YGP Color Manage. Everything is automatically converted to 709 and I do all the editing and then I switch back my color management to YGB and then I color gray each of the footages individually to my liking. I just like to do this manually, but during the editing process, at least I get to see the real colors. Let's go with the CST first. So let's go to effects and let's look for color space transform, drag it in. And then here on the right hand side, the input color space is rec 2020. And then the input gamma is Apple log. And straight away, you're gonna get that 709 look because it's using our timeline settings, which is rec 709. Okay, so this is my skin tone. Now, if you think this is too dark or if you're crushing the shadows down here, you can see you can use the first balance node. I just usually just offset, pull it up a little bit, and there you go. Just like that. So the shadow isn't crushed and I'm not overexposing. And by the way, I've got my little qualifier here and it's showing on my scopes. To turn this on, all you have to do is click on display qualifier focus point. Okay, so I think the color looks pretty good. I mean, if we look at another photo, let's remove this, right? And we use the same grade and there you go. Personally, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, if I want, I can also lift up the shadows a little bit more and you're gonna get that very clean looking image. So how do we get from this to something more this? In the film node, we are going to add the Da Vinci film look creator. This is actually a very convenient and very good in itself, a tool that helps you quickly convert your images to a filmic look. Um, you can see here, I turn it off before and after. See, straight away, you're gonna get some of that filmic characteristics, okay, the glow, the highlation, and then the color change uh, with the color split toning. So the core look usually is cinematic. This is, you know, you can choose from different presets. Okay, you got this one is actually not too bad as well. Alaska is nice, very clean, I think, on this image. Uh, but usually, I'm on cinematic. It's got that little bit of beige, teal kind of tinge look in the highlights. So that's a good starting point. And then everything else mostly is in the color setting. So you've got exposure, contrast, highlights, and then of course, white balance. This is why I do not have a white balance node on its own. I don't want to complicate things. For something like this, my main purpose is quickly, efficiently, 
color grade my footage, get it out on social media. I want to make it simple and that's I think what we as beginners is a great starting point. What I usually do here, this is my fundamental steps, I would actually play with the white balance first. So for example like here, if I think this is too, you know, too warm, you can adjust the white balance. As I go left, okay, you're getting that cooler look and if I go right you're getting that warm afternoon glow. I think there's a bit more green here so I want to remove that and so to remove the green uh, we want to go to the right. So you can remove a little bit and you're adding a little bit of pink. Do you see that? So uh, so just a little bit and I think I can probably add a little bit more blue. There you go. So let's look before after. On the bottom here there are a couple of other settings. So subtractive saturation and richness. This is quite useful as well. Uh, both to do with the color of in the image. So if I turn up the richness, you can see I'm getting a lot more richness in the wood, the orange tone, and I really like that. Uh, on the other hand, if I go to the saturation, well, that's what the name suggests. Everything gets very blodgy very quickly. So uh, this is not something I like to turn on very high um, because it does make the image look very artificial and I like to keep the saturation down a little bit like this maybe just turn up the richness a little bit uh, but I think it's right there so I'm just gonna leave it like that and then also there's other things you can play with for example film gate I sometimes turn this on just to see what it looks like if I had a black border on top just like that and then you can turn off curvature so you have a flat image now one other thing I like to do is uh, the highlights. So let's turn this on. I like to adjust the highlights to bring it down a little bit so the image is a lot more flat. Uh, let's go to the qualifiers and then add a little bit of low soft, right? And then I'm going to drag up the lows. Now while I'm doing this, let's press Shift and H. And what that does is turns on the mask overlay display. And then as I kind of drag up, you can see which areas I'm selecting. The highlights off. I think around here is good. Now shift H again to bring this back. In the highlight wheel you can either use the gain wheel or you can go to the HDR and just go to the light wheel and then turn down the exposure a little bit. Just a little bit. It flattens out it, the image a lot more. If you look before, after. You're bringing a lot more detail from the clouds back. Right, you can see that, and as well as the textures on the floor with the carpets. All right, so this is pretty good. And usually with my overall looks, this is personal preference, but I wouldn't actually have my exposure as high as this. So I actually will turn it down altogether, down a little bit. I like to have a little bit of contrast, uh, but not full black. Now you can go to film, and there's a thing called fade, and what that does is it actually brings out the shadows or the darker areas, and it fades it to a slightly gray. So can you see that? So before it's full dark, very contrasty if you like this look, but if you turn it on, you know, flatten out the image. Okay, so before and after. One other thing sometimes I like to do, this is a bonus step uh, if you want or not, uh, I like to add another node here. And this is one of the new tools in DaVinci, is the color slicer. It's very good, it's just like an HSL. If you don't have this tool, you can use the HSL and it does pretty much the same thing, except this is much more you know, straightforward. It shows you what color you're choosing and how you're adjusting this. One thing is the blue. I like to kind of turn down the saturation of this blue a little bit. So if you go to cyan or blue, and then you've got two tabs. The right hand one is the saturation and the left one is the brightness. So for example, for the blue, I can turn it up or I can turn it down. This is the saturation, right? So if I wanted to desaturate, I just pull it back a little bit so it's not that contrasty. And if I think the color is too bright or too dark, I can also use this to see that lift that specific color. So let's darken a little bit, bring down the sky a little. So you don't want to make too big of adjustment because this will give you banding in your footage. Even though this is 10 bit, be careful with this one. All right. And then of course you also have the hue, so you can change the hue of the select the color which is blue. And I can go left to make it whichever I want, or I can go right to give it a little bit more teal like that, just a little bit. All right, before, after, All right? And you probably already realized there's one called skin. It's actually just an orange tone, uh, but you can lift the skin just a little bit of the person. See, you can see that I'm lifting the orange tone. So that's one quick way of using this as well. Another thing I like to do is add another note at the very end. This is usually a bonus tip. Um, I don't do it all the time, but yeah, this is a vignette. And the way I do it is using a mask or a round circle mask and just make it big, 
large and then feather it out a lot and then find the angle of the sun I think it's this way and focus on this area and then I click on invert mask and just drop the gamma a little bit and then also the shadow because what we're doing right now is we're shaping the focus point of the image we want our audience to focus on a specific area right so I want him to focus on the character one other thing I like to do here as well sometimes I add a blur to the edges of the photo and because I've got this vignette mask right right now selected all I can do is add a radio blur which is here put in and bang you can see the sides kind of get blurred out this is a bit too much let's lower the strength to about just 0.2 it does two things number one it mimics a certain lens now this is still digital so don't compare this with an actual footage shot with the actual lens that blurs the edges like this um, it's just some kind of characters to mimic that kind of you getting a camera shot rather than shot from a digital mobile phone device the second thing is we also increases our focus or shifts our focus to the center of the area if I had to guess I wouldn't know if this was shot on a phone maybe now you can also add a grain as well uh, in filmic down here you can go to grain and you can add a grain but unfortunately you know by adding grain and exporting it on social media or YouTube uh, you don't get to see the full effect so but it, it's something there to you know keep in mind I like to add a lot of grain and let's go to the previous videos and see how quick this is on a couple of other uh, examples so this one here let's delete everything okay we're gonna right click and apply grade and bang straight away we've got something I really like now you can turn off the film and you're getting 709 and it's a great image as well perfectly balanced now the good thing about this node is once you save it you can adjust each of the parameters so for example you can go highlight see if you take it off it's very bright but turn it on it's a lot more flatter image and I like this a lot more you know the roll off on the skin is a lot more better and one thing to keep in mind is uh, because the vignette is case by case so you want to go to the power windows and just make adjustments to your vignette just to make sure it's not affecting areas that you don't want to and then let's go to a couple other ones so we've got Florence here okay and then let's put a okay now you can see this is a little bit more pink and that's not what we want and how do we change this very simple go to film remember the white balance double click on tint to reset and we're back to a more greenish tone and then double click on the white balance a little bit more blue than I like so I want to go right a little bit like this right I want the afternoon sunset kind of feel and then the tint maybe just a little bit less green like that so this is something I like and one thing I would actually do here I just want to show you is let's go to the colors and let's go to the skin or the orange column and then I want to adjust the roof here what I do is let's turn on the saturation you can see that right too much and it's a bit fake uh, let's go down a little bit maybe just here a little bit and then I think it's a bit too red so let's change the hue to a little bit more orange just a little bit just a little bit like that okay and then lighten a little bit so let's lighten this a little bit to give a contrast the side with the light hitting on and then obviously the other shadow side so it brings out a lot of contrast it kind of pops the roof or the dome a little bit more turn down the saturation just a little bit before after right the roof kind of pops a lot more this whole thing makes it really easy when I color grade and I just go through images just like this very very quick hopefully it is helpful